iSARMS.com, the number one place to learn about SARMS online. Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. I have a really good topic today. It's going to be one that's going to draw a lot of interest from you guys and I think it's going to clear up a lot of, of misconceptions that are out there. So what I want to do is talk to you about several misconceptions when comparing oral steroids versus injectable steroids because I get questions about should I do an oral this or an injectable this and what's the difference. I want to address some misconceptions that are out there and kind of get some answers so everybody's aware and there's no confusion out there. Um, you know, the topic of oral steroids itself is really probably one of the most popular topics among mainly newcomers and prospective anabolic steroid users in general. I get more oral questions than anything and it's mainly from newer people to this whole lifestyle. So that's why it's really important to address this. There really exists no greater attraction to those looking into using anabolic steroids for the first time than having that real convenience of being able to just take it in a pill form as opposed to having to inject and, and go through the whole process. So prior to describing the basics of what oral you know, steroids really are, my main focus today is going to be, you know, the misconceptions that are out there. And we'll get into more in later videos, just basic oral steroid facts. I want to clear up the misconceptions first. So I'm going to touch on four really strong misconceptions today. The first one that I want to talk about is the misconception that oral steroids are actually safer than injectable steroids. This is probably the largest misconception among oral anabolic steroids and it's perhaps the second overall largest misconception in regards to steroids in general. I would say that the first misconception is that anabolic steroids are somehow going to generate crazy muscle size and just being ripped and shredded without having to do any hard work or not working out or dieting etc. I mean I don't even want to get into that it pisses me off so bad but that's a completely different story. The real truth here is that both injectable and oral steroids both are going to contain risky compounds in each category, okay? There exist oral steroids that are going to present a much higher risk of various dangers to the body, while there's also injectable steroids that present higher risks as well. And I'm sure many of you know what they are, and if you don't, you know that's something that I've gone through in several videos as well. When it comes down to it, when you really break it down and look at it, Oral steroids are going to be harsher on the body subsystems than the majority of injectables due to the hepatotoxicity that they contain. And although there are one or two milder or considered safer oral steroids, the majority of them are going to present issues, just like I said, of hepatotoxicity and negative cholesterol alterations that are far more impacting than most injectables. We're looking at blood pressure problems, problems with the kidneys. The list goes on and on and on. This is not really a problem present with the majority of injectables with the exception of a select one or two, but mainly the majority of injectable compounds are well tolerated by the body. The specific details in regards to why this is the case is something that I will touch on. Moving on to misconception number two. Oral steroids are less effective or strong or more effective or strong than injectables. Oral steroids are not stronger than, than any injectable steroids and they're not weaker either. The anabolic strength rating, okay, and that's the determined measurement of how effective an anabolic steroid is in terms of the promotion of muscle growth of various oral anabolic steroids does indeed match or surpass the anabolic strength rating of many injectable compounds, while several oral anabolic steroids are going to fall short when compared to injectable compounds as well. So misconception number three, Oral steroids are easier to obtain. I don't know where anybody gets this kind of misconception, but it's out there all the time. Simply put, it's just not true, okay? There exists highly popular anabolic steroids in both categories, oral and injectable, okay? And they're very easy to obtain. It just so happens to be the most popular anabolic steroid of all time, just happens to be D-ball. But aside from this, the next two most popular steroids of all time are both injectables, and that's when we're looking at DECA and Winstrol. Although Winstrol is also an oral too, mainly used as an oral, but also a lot of the times used as an injectable. 
all anabolic steroid sources and vendors are going to carry, you know, types of oral steroids and injectable steroids, probably in equal amounts. I don't know. Everybody's different. Please don't ask me where to get them from, please, because I'm, I'm not here to do that. I'm simply telling you that they're both just as easy to get. There's none. It's not like an injectable or an oral is any easier to get than anything else. They're all equally the same, easy to obtain. The last misconception that I want to talk about is somehow people think oral steroids are cheaper. This is just absolutely ridiculous and not true. It's not even close to true. Within both categories of oral and injectable, there are both more expensive compounds and less expensive compounds. All related to factors such as the popularity of the compound, the ease to manufacture the compound, the ease of access, the cost of the raw materials, and so on and so forth. Some just cost more. Anivar costs a lot more than anything else, and to me it's the weakest of them all. You know, so there's really no rhyme or reason for it, okay? That's just the way that it is. The overall price of an anabolic steroid cycle will generally end up being the same price as an anabolic steroid cycle should ideally be pre-planned and all costs and dosages should be calculated prior to even buying it. At the end of the day, the overall cost of amount of oral steroids to run in any given cycle is often the same price as any other injectable compound with the exception of various more expensive compounds, like I said, like Anivar. Uh, when you compare it to many injectable compounds, simple cycles, for example, of an injectable format of, te of testosterone, is, is actually going to end up being far more cost effective than an oral steroid cycle. If you really look into detail and factor in how much you're getting of each and how long it's going to last, you'd be quite surprised at how the price breakdown normally ends up. But, you know, different places have different prices, etc. So it's hard to say, but do the math sometime. Just don't go, oh, well, I bought a vial of test or a bottle of Winstraw and then compare the prices. You got to compare how long each is going to last you and then factor in the average of the price. And that's going to determine which one's more expensive, not just how much of each one costs, because you could be getting a 20 milliliter jug of test for 80 bucks. Uh, one bottle of Winstraw is probably not, you know, it just depends. It depends on if you got 25 milligram caps of Winstraw or 50 because they come in different ways. Tests could be 200 milligrams a milliliter up to 400 or even 500 if you want to get crazy and really risk some PIP, you know, post-injection pain for people that don't understand that. But the point is, is, you know, pricing is going to end up being quite similar regardless. So that being said, you know, that's the real misconceptions of oral versus injectable steroids. So I hope that everybody has a better grasp and understanding and they don't get confused moving forward. So Dylan Gemelli signing off.